Right, this is uh, William's taxi. We've got a bunch of issues to sort out, so let's go through and see what we need to do. We've got some playfield lamps to sort out. We've got a problem with the skill shop not being able to make the, make anything better than 25,000. We've got some flipper buttons to replace. The flippers are quite weak, so we need to rebuild those. We've got some GI out on the back box. The GI is out on the taxi sign. The sound has an issue. Let's just start a game. So we get the... Don't stop the ball. We get the music and the main sound effects, but we don't get the speech. So let's just do it the... Uh, for example, let's try you Marilyn. So you don't hear the speech. Now if you listen really carefully, you can actually hear it quite faintly, so... It's probably an amplification issue. If I remember rightly, let's have a look. That's the main sound board. Oh, let's do a ball search. That's the main sound board at the top there. And there's also sound generated in this section on the CPU board as well. So the speech will be coming out of here and going into the sound board. So we need to basically check the connectivity between the two and check the mixing and amplification as well. So does that, I'm not sure why the uh, GI is out yet, I'll have to look at that one. We also have the bottom line of segments out on the lower display, so we need to look at that. The uh, knocker doesn't work, and I can see immediately it's not actually connected, it's just got two wires up there, so we need to sort that out as well. Right, I think we need to talk about fuses again. Now I know I go on and on about this, but it's like, it's guaranteed that if you buy a second-hand pinball machine, some complete moron at some point in this pinball machine's life will have changed half the fuses to the wrong values, and they will be completely wrong as well. It's like every single machine I buy. Right, let's have a look at this one. I pulled these ones out that are of interest. So, what have we got here? F4. This should be 2.5 amps. What have we got? Oh, can't focus that. 6 amps. F5. What's that one? 2.5 amp. What have we got here? 2.5. That's a 5 amp. There you go, double. F6. F6 fell apart when I took them out, so I need a new one of those. I don't know what it was though. Uh, F8 is a 7 amp. And this is an 8 amp. Uh, right, what have we got here? F3. F3 is a 2.5. What have we got? Can't see it on this one. That's a 5, so again it's doubled. And um, what have we got up here? F3. Right, this is 825 milliamp or 1 eighth of an amp. That is 3 amps. That's really, really high. I'm saving the best one for last. This is the worst overfusing I've ever seen in the history of pinball machines. This is again 125 milliamps or one eighth of an amp. Ready for this? Let's see if you can see. Look at that. That is like a nail. You might as well put a fucking nail across this. It is a 20 amp fuse, that. 20 amps low blow fuse. <laughs> So, this entire power supply board would be able to set on fire before that fuse blew. What sort of a moron puts a 20 amp fuse in place of a 1 8 amp fuse? These people should not be allowed to touch pinball machines. Anyway, I've got myself a handful of new fuses. I'm going to put all the correct fuses in and make this machine safe. Fortunately, nothing bad seems to have happened while these crap fuses have been in place, but it does happen from time to time when a coil smokes and you don't know why it's because you've got the wrong fuse if you had the right fuse the fuse would blow before the coil smokes so yeah let's get this back to the way it should be now the mains lead on this taxi is pretty horrible it's all chewed up got tape all over it There's tape all over it here as well a bit of a oh, plugs i think i put that plug on actually that one's not too bad I've got a, a real brand new cable there, 1.5mm, a bit overkill for what it needs, but it's a bit more heavy duty this, so less likely to get damaged. Um, so yeah, let's put a new cable on, I need a longer one, that's not very long actually. Uh, so yeah, let's change that. Right, to replace this mains lead we take this metal box off located on the inner panel, and in here we'll see the mains lead comes in here, and it's directly soldered onto this filter, so we need to unsolder these wires. 
pull this out and put the new lead in and resolder it. So the new wire's in and the box is refitted. Oh, the fuse here I need to check. I've got here. It's a uh, 7 amp. That's, I'm sure, yeah, 4 amp. Typical, make sure you check every fuse and every machine you buy. There's always many wrong fuses in for some reason. So let's put a 4 in there. And that's the new cable finished off with a new plug. Let's test it out. And we're losing a bit of power on the flippers, well, particularly the left flipper. So one thing you can check is look at the sparks with the playfield lifted. So first of all, we'll look at the flipper button. So we press the button. Minimal sparking. We'll try this one. Again, minimal sparking. Now let's look at the EOS switches. Oh, that's a big flash. So that's losing a hell of a lot of power there, where that flash of light is actually suck, sucking away power. So, let's look at the other one. Uh, small spark, that looks fairly reasonable. So this one here, big flash. So we need to uh, see if we can file that switch down. If not, we need to replace it. So a closer look at the US switch. This wire is not on properly, so that's gonna be losing power there. And this switch contact, I don't know how you can see it, that's that's end of life, it's basically worn down to next to nothing on one side. So if we filed that we'd have nothing in the contact left. So new switch. Okay, the new switch is fit and soldered on. We get a nice small spark now. We've got an operator alert. Let's have a look. Check switch 22. Shoot lane. So this switch. Let's uh, test that out. There we go. That's that's why the shoot lane switch doesn't work. There's a wire broken off. So we'll solder that back on. I've resoldered the shoot lane switch now. Uh, I was just inspecting this other flipper here, and this EOS switch. Let's just get in front. This EOS switch looks like an electronic one, not a high voltage one as it's got a very small contact on the upper side um, hmm, I'm probably going to replace that, it looks a bit iffy now if we do an all lamp test we can see everything is working apart from this row here these values do not work at all now this is the header pin on the back of the lamp board and if we look closely we can see we've got some cracked solder joints so let's pull this board out, reflow that connector and see if that fixes the problem I've actually got horrible non-matching buttons on here. This one's got like a indentation on it. This one's a more normal one. So let's put a matching pair of buttons on there. I'm actually having trouble fitting the new button here, and that's because the metal isn't perfectly aligned with the wood. Uh, it's glued down, so I can't actually move it. So what I'm going to have to do is just run the grinder around there, just to grind it out to the right shape. There we have it, the new button's in, and that's going to be the most expensive button change in the history of pinball machines. While I was grinding out that steel, it's only what, a mil, probably 0.8 mil thick. Uh, I was grinding out of a grinding stone on my Dremel, and the basically the end of the Dremel's melted solid, so it will not release the tool now, so I need, probably need a new shaft for my Dremel. That's going to be fairly expensive.